Folks, this is Book Talk with Corbin. I'm your host. We have a returning guest here, David Horowitz. Um, he has been here many times. I tell you, folks, every time I bring him on, hundreds of views, and they just people keep keep going, keep going, keep going, keep watching them. So go to my website, BookTalkWithCorbin.com, and see several of my interviews I've had with David Horowitz. Um, he write one of his uh, latest books is Final Battle. You need to check that out, and also. One book that um, I have many copies of is called Dark Agenda, The War to Destroy Christian America. And, you know, Mr. Horowitz, I wanted to tell you, brother, I just gave that book, I gave a copy of that to a local minister. He thanked me profusely, and then his son said, you know, uh, my father better not leave that book around because I'm going to take it from him because I'm I'm determined to read it myself. Uh, It amazes me how uh, so many people in the Christian community, when they see it, I really think it's that title, they just jump right on it. Mm. I've had others who've who've read parts of it, and they've gotten back. worse. They shot up that Catholic school. It's just terrible. Oh, yes. They're the victims. They defend a deranged murderer of children. It's just amazing. You know, the one thing that, that really bothers me about the the whole situation is it seems like a lot of the so-called progressives, they wanted to sort of paint that situation that happened in Nashville where this transgender, well, this woman who believes she's a man, I guess that makes her a transgender man. Um, they wanted to bring that, turn that into a gun control issue while ignoring uh, the fact that she was... Uh, transgender individual and it seemed like that whole transgender oh, it's worse than that. they said they said she was invisible they had an invisibility day and the mm-hmm. only uh way she could become visible was what she did she planned this over three months so killing three nine-year-olds um makes her visible it, sh- it should make her condemned by everybody the, the left is sick. It's just a sick response. And and it, it, it and I it's want this, your I want your thoughts on this. It, it it also strikes me as as like giving a green light to to acts of terrorism. Mass oh. murderers, children murderers, mm-hmm. and this is a, was carefully plotted over three months. And you notice they've suppressed her manifesto. Yes, yeah. You know, if she was a Trump supporter, that manifesto would be all over the place. <laughs> you better believe You and better believe that. We, we live in really dark times. Mm. Yeah, that's that, that's so absolutely true. And, and I, I saw one demonstration where they were expressing, they, they were raising uh, fingers and sympathy or something like that, and they raised seven, seven oh, fingers. Seven, seven victims. Yeah. Yeah. Murder is a victim. Right. And it just seemed like, I don't know, maybe I, I, I missed it. Grow up to be leftists. <laughs> Mess up their brains forever. And I, I, I didn't seem to get much of a negative reaction or response from the Biden administration and other people in the Democratic Party saying, yeah, oh, because they are, you know, the transgender uh, fascists are part of their constituency. The Biden administration has no morals, none. Do you, do you think part of that is is votes or, or money, or or do they just really embrace I that ideology? Ideologues. And if you're an ideologue, you can think that the sky is purple. Yeah. You know, they have, they have their way of not thinking about things. Yeah. And that's definitely one non-way of thinking. I, I, I mean, it really troubled I mean, they me. They supported a border wall until Trump built it. <laughs> right. And then they, they were open, but they supported the wall. Yeah. And they changed it. It's all about power. Yeah. Well, brother, the big reason why I want you to come on today, and I, and I really want to... Uh, yeah, tell me when we're on. Oh, yeah. Or are we on? Yeah, we're on now. Yeah, we're on now. And uh, I want to talk to you more about the uh, 
this whole the whole general reparations question. Um, I'm surprised at the amount of uh, attention, the amount of traction this issue is getting. Well, uh, just imagine, it says, if tomorrow Gavin Newsom um, said, we're not going to give reparations to black America, we're going to give it to the transgender community. Mm-hmm for all the suffering that they've had at the hands of people who don't think you can invent yourself into a new sexual identity. Yeah. How mad would, would black people be? Well, that that's one reason why reparations is a terrible idea. Mm-hmm. You think all those Hispanics, for, for, as you know, the Hispanics are a much larger minority than black people. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this country, um, how and what did Hispanics have to do with American slavery? Right. Nothing. Yet they're going to be taxed to give five million dollars to everybody whose skin color is dark. I mean, this is crazy. You want to create resentment? Go ahead. It's a just a terrible idea, but. I'd like to start, first of all, with the misconceptions about slavery in America. Mm -hmm. Um, You hear ridiculous things said uh, mainly by Democrats and leftists, woke people, that the Constitution is a white supremacist document. The words white and black don't appear in the Constitution. It's a universal document. Slavery existed in Africa for a thousand years before a white person ever set foot on the continent. And it still exists there today. And it was tremendous. After the uh, Civil War, uh, the England and France and the United States tried to end the slave trade globally. And the resistance came from Muslims, who are generally regarded as brown people, and and from black African kings who didn't want to give up their slaves. The English sent gunboats into Africa to force them to free their slaves. So every slave, virtually every slave who was shipped to America was enslaved by black Africans and sold at auctions in Ghana and Benin. And one of the reasons why this, this fiction that white Americans uh, well, or even white Europeans who were, had colonized uh, North America, um, went into Africa and threw nets over Kunta Kintes and, and, and kidnapped them to America is just a myth. And one of the reasons is that there was no quinine to cure malaria. So a white person, the average life of a white person who set foot in Africa was one year. So, of course, they, aside from the fact that, you know, um, African kings were not without weapons and whatnot, um, why risk your life when you can just go to a slave auction in Ghana or Benin and buy slaves? So, and this had nothing, by the way, to do with racism. It had to do with Europeans wanting to get into the slave trade, which was lucrative and which was widely developed in in Africa. They just bought into an African institution. Um, I also should say that just for comparison, that and this is. Uh, and some people might bristle at this, but slavery in America was much more benign than it was in the rest of the Western Hemisphere. In Brazil, for example, they had to replace the slave population every year. It was so brutal. Mm. Whereas in America, the slave trade was ended in uh, 1808, and the slave population quadrupled. Wow. People felt safe enough and, and were comfortable enough, if you will. 
I mean, slavery is a horrible institution, but it has been in every country. You know, we get the word slave from Slav, because the Slavs were uh, Mm. put in chains. But the Jews, uh, you know, they were slaves in Egypt in 1200 BC. Right. And what you have is you have an African institution that Europeans bought into, but America was created in 1776 with the Declaration of Independence, uh, which was written by Christians. Nobody condemned slavery morally until white male Christians, I say this as a Jew, white male Christians in England, uh, led by Wilberforce, declared it immoral. Mm. And Thomas Jefferson wrote into the into the Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal and have a God-given right to liberty. So the reason that every African American uh, is free today, who was descended from slaves, is because of white people and their sacrifices. 360,000 mainly white Union soldiers gave their lives to free the slaves. Uh, If you want to think of the debt that one people has to another, think of that. Mm. Um, The the negative things here are so great. One, One, of course, being the resentment. If you give reparations to people who not only themselves have never been slaves, but their parents were never slaves and probably their grandparents were never slaves. Mm -hmm. And you take the money to pay these reparations from people. Well, for example, my parents uh, came to America in early 1900s after slavery was gone. Um, And while slavery was in operation, they were in uh, uh, ghettos in Russia being vamped on by Cossacks. Mm -hmm. But I I believe it's 80% 80 of the American population descended from immigrants who came here after slavery was ended. Now, let me say what black people sacrifice by doing this. First of all, you're going to generate incredible resentment from Hispanics. Mm -hmm. Already the relations between the black and Hispanic community is is not that great. And the Hispanics outnumber blacks two to one, I think it's it's over two to one. Um, So why would you want to antagonize these people by, you know, taking, having the government stick its hands in their pockets and give it to people who are never slaves whose parents were never slaves, mm-hmm. whose grandparents were never slaves. Um, that, that, and what black people give up by doing this is by not recognizing what a gift it was uh, to every black person who was shipped to America, that their descendants now, the black community in America is the richest, most privileged, um, freest black community in the world, including all of black Africa and the black West Indies. So also black people are, you know, they were brought here in 1619, uh, which makes them, that's before the Mayflower. So black people have a claim on America. Um, you know, just by their mere presence here, uh, that trumps, you know, most white people's claim. Mm. Uh, Mm. Why would you want to give up that? I mean, this is a great country. Uh, Slavery is an institution that's been with mankind for 3,000 years and more. Uh, America lived the world in ending slavery. Mm -hmm. Uh, The racism 
uh, which has marred the post-slavery period, comes because the slave owners, it's the first time in history that slave owners tried to defend slavery uh, and defend themselves. N never before were they put up against the wall this way. And of course, wow. the biggest obstacle, they were all considered themselves Americans. And here the Declaration of Independence says that all, all people are equal and have a God-given right to liberty. So the first thing the slave owners did was to challenge that and say, all people are not equal and black people are inferior. That's where Southern racism comes from. And people, you know, people are ornery and they're prejudiced. And it, that, that, that has no color line, the prejudice. Yeah. All people have prejudices and speak ill of other people. And when you think of the what what what's you know that America's had a black president, that the icons of American youth are black athletes. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if there's going to be a poster on the wall of a young kid, probably a male, but also females. Uh, you know, it's going to be Michael Jordan or somebody like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love watching. Um, and they have on the internet um, all these Larry Bird videos uh, and all these black ball players paying tribute to Larry Bird. Mm -hmm. uh, and to me, that that's one of the great signs of hope for this country. I, I think that by now, most people get along with each other. And, uh, you know, if you look at the ads on TV, for example, you know, about I would say half the advertisements contain uh, feature black families, yes. black professionals, yeah, you know, way out of proportion to the blacks are only 13% of the population. Right. But they're probably 50% of the people who are. Right. featured in a positive light let, let, in, let, let, so, let me ask so you let me ask you the here is that, that the black community the black community's path forward is to embrace america as i say that it's before the pilgrims came blacks right. <laughs> black folk were here right also the message of getting reparations for nothing which is what this is all about, since there are no slaves or descendants, well, right. or immediate descendants of slaves to give reparations to, is, you know, it's money for nothing. And what does that do to the incentive to people to, to work? You're going to give $5 million to a person because of their skin color, regardless of their you know, who they are in life. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah. And that, that's the message the left always sends to black people. The left has contempt for black people. Every inner city in America, with all its injustices and unemployment and rampant crime, is run by the Democrat Party. Mm -hmm. Why would, you know, I mean, I think the, the greatest advantage advancement of black people in America today would be if they would just abandon the Democratic Party. Right. Because they're responsible for, for every injustice that you see in the inner city. Right. Um, let, let me ask you, let me ask you this about the uh, Democratic Party. First of all, I just want to say to folks, this is Book Talk with Corbin. I'm your host. Go to my website, booktalkwithcorbin.com. See all my interviews, particularly my interviews of, of our current guest, Mr. David Horowitz, New York Times bestselling author. Uh, one of his great books is Dark Agenda, The War to Destroy Christian America. After what happened in Nashville with the massacre of those six people, including three children, I think this is a Dark Agenda is a book you definitely need to have on your shelf, not on your shelf, but actually you need to be reading that. 
it's very important. I've been distributing this book to different believers throughout the city of Louisville, and the response has been extremely positive. Brother, um, we, we just got a couple of minutes left, because I actually have another guest, local person. You know, and I think I'm fairly typical. I have, count them, I don't know. I, I have immediate black family. I have three, three black grandchildren, three Filipino grandchildren. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's crazy. It's we're, we're so beyond segregation, except in leftist institutions like universities where they have separate graduations for blacks and whites. That's a ter mm -hmm. terrible, terrible idea. That's, that's part of the question I wanted to raise with you. It's, it's a little related. The Democratic Party appears to be holding up that banner of reparations um, on, the, on the local level, state level. Yeah, they're buying votes. That's basically what it is. Okay, and, and because... So their equity programs. Because, because, money because it's like, you know, when you ask, it seems like only conservatives sort of ask, well, who's paying for this? <laughs> you know, who's paying for this? And logically... Let me point out that 80% of black people in America live above the poverty line. They're not poor. Mm -hmm. 80%. This is such a land of opportunity. And, it, and it, it's, anyway, it's obvious. And if you listen to the left, it's all systemic racism, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Which right. The reason you know that systemic racism doesn't exist that's that's a system of racism institutionalized mm -hmm. is because it was outlawed by the Civil Rights Act. And you know that if there was one police department that was systemically racist, there would be massive lawsuits mm -hmm. and huge penalties that they would have to pay for doing that. But there are no such lawsuits because there is no systemic racism. Joe Biden is a born racist. I mean, not only was he close to all the Ku Klux Klan members in Congress as a as a young uh, legislator, uh, but it just comes out of his mouth all the time, racist mm -hmm. comments. And that, that, that's his instinct. <laughs> right. and, and, you know, brother, I, I, I just keep falling back on this issue. When you talk to folks within the Democratic Party, when you, the leadership, who's paying for this? And basically, it's going to have to be a tax situation, and it's going to have to be a race-based tax. We're going to have to tax the white folks to, and to, to redistribute that money to the black folks. It's all race-based, and it's, it would strike me as— Well, but you're also going to have to tax Hispanics who aren't white— Muslims who aren't white, I, you know, you could just go on. Mexicans who aren't white, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I think if nothing else, I don't see how it how would be constitutional. It just seemed like to me it'd be the yeah, judicial it, branch would. No, the Biden administration and its equity programs is unconstitutional. It's racist. It's the, we, this is the first overtly racist government we've had in, in Joe Biden. Um, Woodrow Wilson was a racist, but I did not, to my knowledge, have policies which separated people according to race and rewarded some and punished others. Right, right. You know, and I think most white people are sort of ignorant about the history. I think most people are ignorant of our history, and they don't understand the tremendous role that America played yeah. in freeing black people the world over, mm -hmm. the world over. I, I think a lot of people are, are, you know, as you brought up about the Civil War and the amount of people who uh, died and, and suffered and the destruction, and, it, and when it came right down to it, the Civil War was fought over the issue of slavery, the Civil War resulted in the end of slavery. And we lost more lives. Yes. Than in all America's other wars, yes, combined, yes, 
And I, and I think really, maybe this is a little off the wall, but, you know, in the beginning of the nation, you know, I always had the impression some of the founders said, you know what, this slavery thing's going to come back to bite us. Yeah, and, and it, it did. Yeah. It did in the in the form it of the has, civil war. But we need to break free of it now. Right. Yeah. It's just... It's horrible. But look... I appreciate you, brother. I always appreciate you coming on. You, you you always teach us so much. And I just want to keep saying to people, you've got to get, listen to the interviews I have of uh, Dr. Uh, David Horowitz posted at uh, Book Talk with Corbin, booktalkwithcorbin.com. Buy his books. And one of them I, I strongly urge people to buy is not only Final Battle, which is one of his latest books, but also Dark Agenda, The War to Destroy Christian America. If you really want to put into perspective what happened in Nashville, um, you need to get Dark Agenda, The War to Destroy Christian America. I mean, they hate Christians because Christians owe their allegiance to a higher power mm -hmm. than the Democratic Party. That's, that's the basic thing. Right. Yeah, well, it's there, so bad. There are certain I there just, are certain pastors in this city need to hear that message, brother. <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm going to help. I'm going to help uh, at least give them the opportunity to hear that message by giving them uh, more by distributing more copies of of Dark. And there's a lot of information on the internet. Um, and of course, Thomas Sowell is the, the guru, if you will, of. Uh, He's the expert on slavery, on racism, um, mm. and he's, he's taught me, he, he turned me around when I was a leftist. He wrote mm. a book called Civil Rights, Rhetoric, or Reality. Wow. That turned okay. me around. So it's right. just, brother, thank you again, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to connect with you again, brother. Okay, thank you, Gorman. You bet.